In this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into September beach fishing, covering everything from what fish to target, what bait and rigs to use and more. And keep watching through to the end because I'm gonna give you some pro tips. I'm gonna also show you my favorite lures to use when I'm casting lures into the surf and even more to help you catch more fish in the month of September from the beach. So let's get started. And if you're wondering why I'm talking to you in my car, it's because my house is too loud. I've got cats and dogs and husbands and lots of, well, not multiple husbands. It's just loud. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. My name is Kathy Sanders and I'm a beach fishing guide in Northeast Florida. Even though this information about beach fishing is localized from my area in September, the tips and techniques that you're gonna learn can be used for any beach. So just pay attention to the water temperature and what fish you're gonna be targeting and you can adjust the information for your area. Here in Florida, September is a unique month because even though summer vacations are over and the kids are back in school and it's fall and everybody's wanting to put on sweaters and think about pumpkin spice lattes and everything pumpkin, the water is still just so warm. We're looking at 80 to 100 degree air temperatures and our waters are still 80 to 85 degrees, which is still too warm for all the fall fishing that we're dreaming about. Fall oh, pompano run. Can't wait to catch some pompano. And even though at least this year, the tropics have been fairly calm so far, that still doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet when it comes to severe weather and tropical storms and hurricanes, because we still have this really warm water, which is perfect for developing tropical systems. For most of the month of September, our water temperatures are gonna stay up in the 80s most likely. So it's still perfect conditions and temperatures for those tropical storms to be developing. Right now we're gonna talk about what fish to target in the month of September. If you watched the video that I put out a few weeks ago, it talked about fish migration patterns and water temperatures, and I gave a quick breakdown of every month of the year and what main fish to target during that month. I had so much information that I wanted to share in that video. I was not able to go into a lot of detail. I only listed maybe three fish for each month that were the main ones that you might wanna target. We're gonna talk even deeper about what fish that you can expect to catch during the month of September. I'll put a link in the description and at the end of the video, we'll also put a link to that video so that you can go back and watch that. It has a ton of helpful information. In September, the water is still gonna be really warm. Somewhere between 80 to 88 degrees is what you can expect. So because of that warmer water, it may tend to be more dirty, especially in our area in Northeast Florida. Some of our beaches, especially in the Flagler County area, are going to stay dirtier because of those warm temperatures. So you can expect to catch catfish and sharks and stingrays and ladyfish and all of those summer fish, little bait fish, spot fish, croakers that we're typically catching in the summer. Those fish are still gonna be hanging around because of those warm water temperatures. But you can still catch some really nice fish in between all those other, some people call them trash fish. Some of them are really good to eat. Those sail cats, they've got really good meat on them. But if you know how to rig for some of these nicer fish and you can tell where they're running and when they're running, you can hook up on some really nice fish in the month of September. So be watching for days when the east winds are blowing and it's pushing those cleaner waters into the shore. Seems like we've had a lot of the southwest winds, a lot of the winds coming from the south, and that's gonna push the current, it's gonna push that dirtier water up. But once they start turning and you see a lot of east winds coming up, pay attention to your apps that show wind directions, that show tide conditions and things like that. My favorite app to use is one called Surfline, and even in the free version, you can see a lot of great information about water temperatures, about wind direction, about tides, and all kinds of information that you wouldn't know otherwise. But look for those east winds when it starts turning and the east wind starts blowing, especially for a few days in a row, you can expect that water to clean up, and then you might have some really nice conditions for catching pompano and some of these other fish that we're gonna talk about. In that fish migration video, I talked about September being a good month to target redfish, pompano, and Spanish mackerel. Last month, we were already starting to hook up on some Spanish mackerel. On our Go Fish Cam, we were starting to see some mullets starting to run the surf already in August. So September, you're gonna be watching for all of those predatory fish that are chasing the mullet run. We are 
going to see Spanish mackerel because of that. We will be seeing more redfish. The pompano are starting to come down from the north as the waters start cooling down, start looking for them to return. And in the meantime, we have residential pompano. When the waters clean up and the, those east winds push the clean water in, you can look for those pockets to be catching these residential pompano. Had a charter a few days ago and all we were catching was pompano. So always have some lines out for pompano when the conditions are right. Years past in September, I've been catching bluefish, ladyfish, palometta, spotted sea trout, black drum, and lots of nice whiting. So even though I didn't mention any of those fish in that fish migration video, you can expect to see all of those kinds of fish in the month of September based on the water conditions and based on the temperature of the water. Now, last September, we were catching all kinds of redfish. Keep watching at the end of the video in our pro tip section, I'm gonna be showing you how to rig for redfish. And I'm also gonna show you how to snell a hook, which is a good way to be making these fish finder rigs or Carolina rigs, which is the type of rig that you're gonna to wanna to use when you're targeting redfish. Something really cool to note is that in September, I've caught quite a few of my personal best fish. I caught my PB redfish in September last year. The year before, I caught my PB nurse shark. Um, it was over five foot long. Now we're gonna talk about what bait to use on the beach in September. And the biggest change that we're gonna see when it comes to bait in September is the start of the mullet run. Those mullet are running the surf and there's gonna be a lot of fish chasing them. Last year in August and September, we were already seeing in August, we were seeing them run in the surf. And then by the middle of September, we were seeing them by the thousands running in the surf. So if you can learn how to use a cast net, and I've got a little short on YouTube, how to use a cast net in 60 seconds or something like that. But I run through the really quick, the simple steps of how to use it without putting the lead in your mouth. You're gonna save a whole lot of money on bait if you can learn how to use a cast net. And it's really super fun to catch your own bait in the surf. Next, when it comes to bait, sand fleas is also a bait of choice. I've caught some of my best redfish on a sand flea. So sand fleas should still be around. You should be able to catch them. And if you're not sure how to find sand fleas, I've got videos about not only how to locate them on the beach, but also how to catch them with or without a rake. And when it comes to bait, there are some staples that you should always have on hand when you're gonna be surf fishing. And the first one is shrimp. You should always have some type of shrimp. Everything in the ocean eats shrimp. So I like to get live shrimp from the tackle shop if I can, but sometimes I'm getting out there before the tackle shops are even open. I'm also going to be um, fishing sometimes when the tackle shops are out of shrimp. So what I like to do is salt my, my own shrimp. And if you've watched any of my videos for any length of time, you'll see that I'm using salted shrimp on a regular basis. Some days it's all they want to eat. And lastly, for bait, I always have some type of synthetic bait. Lately, what's been working best for me is fish gum. So here's two different flavors of fish gum that we've been using a lot lately. We've got pump smash, and these come in strips, but you can cut them down into little squares or triangles or whatever um, shape that you think works best. With our float hooks, I, I tend to make little teeny tiny triangles. So like one strip that I would normally cut, I will cut that into four small pieces. And that way, like if I have a sand flea on there, it's not gonna obstruct the view of the sand flea or whatever else, if there's shrimp or whatever, the fish can still see that other bait. And then I still have this synthetic bait that if um, I've got little bait stealers that are eating all the bait off of my hook, they're not gonna be stealing these off as easily. So I still might be able to get a fish hook up even if my shrimp gets stolen. But fish gum has been working really good for us lately. They got several different flavors so I would go check that out. And it's not necessarily bait, but I always have a casting rod on hand with a lure on there so that if I see pods of fish start and run, if I see a lot of like maybe bluefish or Spanish mackerel starting to run, then I can just grab that pole and start throwing it. And um, that is a super fun way to fish on the beach when the conditions are right. But Stay tuned to the end because I'm going to show you some of my favorite artificial lures to use when I'm casting lures into the surf. And if you're finding this information helpful, please go ahead and push a like. And if you're not subscribed yet, you're going to want to push that subscribe button because every month I'm going to be putting out another video like this to help you catch more fish that month. 
Now let's talk about rigs for fishing in September on the beach. First of all, I wanna talk about our pompano rigs. You're gonna to wanna to have some type of pompano rig out there because even if the water's too warm for the main schools of pompano coming by, you're still got residential pompano. And so when you have the right conditions and the water is clean and you have found where those pompano are running, for instance, two days ago when we were catching the pompano, they were all running right in front of the sandbar. So once we found out where they were running, we brought all the other lines to that location on the beach. Um, like right in front of the sandbar and we started catching pompano on multiple lines. Got our pompano rigs, now these are made by Frisky Fins and we added two new colors recently. We added um, yellow and red. So we've got orange and this works in a lot of good conditions but lots of uh, clean water. This is one of my favorites. If you watch our videos, our silver rig, works in dirty water, works in clean water. We catch a ton of fish on this silver rig and you're not gonna find silver in too many other places. As far as I know, we're the only one putting silver on pompano rigs. We've also got purple. This is great for dirty water. We've got red. Um, red's been working no matter what the water conditions are. Now your float colors, you're gonna match these up based on the water clarity. So um, yellow is a dirty water color, yellow and green. Here's our green rig. But we've got a float on the top and we've got a couple of beads on the bottom. These have been working great. And then pink, this is great, really, really good one for when it's clean water. I hand tie our float rigs. We put our floats right on the hooks. You probably heard me say it a million times if you watch our channel a lot, but when you watch underwater footage, these pompano, especially whiting do it too, are sucking in these floats before they suck in the bait. So we've got the floats on the hooks so they can't miss it. We've got five colors with our float rigs. We've got pink and orange. Both of these are for clean water. Um, red has been working no matter what the water conditions. And then both of these, again, are for dirty water. You've got the, um, the green and the yellow. I was just at a fishing meeting yesterday and somebody came up to me and they said, yeah, I need to get some more of your uh, floats, you know, your, your rigs with the little balls on the hooks because they said they work really good. And I was like, yeah, they do. <laughs> if you're wanting to get stocked up for September, you might want to look at our store, fishing-girl.com. I'm going to put a link right on the screen here, fishing-girl.com. Go check it out. We've got our pompano rigs. We've got our float rigs there. And to complete your surf fishing setup with your pompano or your float rigs, we also are now selling our sinkers. We've got three, four, and five ounce sinkers. And these are made by Redfin Fishing and he's making them with our branded fishing girl colors. So go check those out in our shop too. You need a good sinker to keep your bait where you want it when you're throwing it out in the surf. You don't want to go through all the trouble and all the expense to get good rigs and get it all ready and then throw it out there and have it moving all over the place. So another type of rig that's really effective for September beach fishing, because you're going to be targeting fish like redfish, you might be able to hook up on black drum. You might also be able to hook up on some flounder that are in the surf on calm days. And you're going to want to be using a fish finder rig for those types of fish. So a fish finder rig can be super effective because what it is, is it helps find the fish. It's kind of like what its name says. Um, your weight is going to be free flowing, so it can kind of move around. It can let your, your, your bait move around too. You're going to have a hook that's away from your sinker and so the fish is not going to be able to get spooked away by seeing your weight there and I've just been researching this a lot and what happens is especially redfish when they pick up the bait and start running with it if they start to feel weight on the line they will drop that bait and leave. I haven't personally found the best rig yet for my own use and this is one that I'm going to be trying soon because I've never really put the weight on the main line. If you have a rig that you have found works really well for catching redfish in the surf feel free to leave a comment and share that uh, with me and with the others who are watching this video. If I try out a rig that you suggest and it works, then I'll give you a shout out. September can be a really great month for surf fishing, but there's still maybe days where it's too hot to fish. So you might want to use that time to clean up your equipment, go through and maintenance your reels if you know how to do that. Get them re-spooled. If you don't have a way to re-spool them yourself, you can probably take them to your local tackle shop. When it comes to re-spooling, I try to do that at least once a year because if you feel your line just as it drags over the sand and stuff, it can get worn out and you can feel the spots where it's like starting to fray. You don't want that if you get a big redfish on the line. You don't want your line to be compromised right when you've got like your PB redfish and then it breaks and, and it's gone and then you'll be crying. Get your rods and your reels maintenanced and cleaned and do a deep clean on things. We all know that there's areas of our tackle boxes that haven't been cleaned out in a while. Yeah, mine's pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to get right on that next time. <laughs>
<laughs> next day it's too hot to fish. I'm gonna be cleaning mine out too. The good thing about September fishing is that the beaches shouldn't be as busy. Kids are back in school. People aren't on vacation as much. So you should be able to have a little bit more uh, room to breathe when you're out there fishing on the beach. As always in September, watch your weather reports. I always tell people to keep an eye out for any tropical systems, for any pop-up thunderstorms that might be heading your way. Now we're gonna get into our pro tips, but I can't do these in the car because I'm actually gonna show you how to hook a mullet and my mullet are at the house. So let's go home and I'm gonna show you those pro tips there. And the first tip that I'm gonna give you is to always have bait fish or smaller fish, maybe if you catch a smaller whiting or something, on hand and throw out on one of your lines to catch bigger fish. You may not always get a bite on a fish head or a chunk of mullet or cut bait, but when you do, it's sure to be a story that you're gonna wanna tell. About a week ago, I actually hooked up on a tarpon after I caught a croaker, cut off the head, and I threw the croaker head out. I'll put a link to that video right here. We've got, I believe this is a five aught hook. Here is a little mullet we caught the other day. Looks like something tried to take a little bite out of him. <laughs> but he was live, he's frozen now. So if I wanted to hook this guy up alive, I would probably hook him with a smaller hook through the back, right about in this area. Just kind of hooking through his back. And of course it's gonna be harder when he's frozen. Just kind of like that, so where he can swim, it's not through his brain, it's not going to hinder any of his functions, but you may want to clip off part of his tail like that. Um, you could go even a little bit more, just so he's not gonna have full mobility and he's going to um, swim around like he's damaged and that will attract more attention and keep him from swimming away from the predator fish. But anyways, another way to hook him, if you're going to hook him whole, right through the mouth here, and up through his head. That's a great, very secure way to hook him. You could also hook him live that way. You can hook him dead, but I, what I find when I hook him this way whole is that the fish will come up and bite right up to here. <laughs> so a lot of times what I will do is go ahead and cut off and just use either half of the fish or just the head like this and you still got all the guts and stuff, so that's gonna attract, you'll have some blood, but then you've got this bait right here. Those are a couple of my favorite ways to hook mullet, so if you have a different way that you like to hook it, leave a comment, let us know, and uh, maybe we'll try that out next time. My second pro tip for you is to learn how to throw lures in the surf, because when you do, you're gonna find a really fun way to fish. And I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite lures right here. By far, this type of lure, um, it's kind of like a spoon. This is a Johnston spoon. It also can rig weedless with this little thing here. But this one has been my favorite. I actually got these off of Amazon. I have not used this green one, but I wore out the red one and the blue one. And the, I think I've got the yellow one on my rig right now, but it comes in a pack of like five. This is what we've been catching Spanish mackerel on. It's what we've been catching bluefish on and super easy. This is about three fourths of an ounce. So much fun to throw these. First thing in the morning, you can throw something like this. This is from uh, Salt Strong. It is the Moonwalker, and I like it that it has these inline hooks. It makes it a lot easier for um, unhooking fish. I like this type of a setup for the surf. You've got a weighted hook. You're gonna need some weight to get this line out into the water to be able to get your lure out there. Different from uh, inshore because you've got sometimes stronger winds coming at you and with the waves and everything, you need something with a little bit of weight to get that out further. So something like this with a paddle tail, you're gonna get some good action. Or if you have something with a curly tail, that's also good. But I can't remember how much weight this is, but it just gives you enough weight to get it out there. Or you could use like, here's a um, Slam Shady Mulligan on a jig head. This is weed which you don't really need the weedless in the surf. I think this is a quarter of an ounce. Something like this would be like, I believe a half ounce um, jig head. You can tell this is really old. These are just a few of my favorite lures that I like to throw in the surf. Final pro tip that I have for you, I'm gonna show you how to snell a hook. This is um, something that you wanna use with your fish finder rig. We use snells when we're making like a mortician rig where we want a stronger main line and then maybe your, your drops are not gonna be as strong. So right now we're gonna change the camera angle. I'm gonna show you how to snell that hook. This is 40 pound mono. You can use 40 or 50 or 60. So we're gonna take this first of all 
through the, the eye of the hook down the back of it. And then I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to wrap this around probably seven or eight times. You see, you want those loops to be really uniform around there. And then I'm going to figure out, I'm going to hold that. I'm gonna hold that there and I'm gonna figure out how long I want this to be. So let's just say I want it about this long. Cut that off. And then I'm gonna take the end of it right back through the top there and just pull it tight. And, and that actually is very strong. It's gonna hold that there. Now you can clip the tag end here. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but if, like say if we want to clip it, I just wouldn't clip it all the way up into those loops. Just clip it off there to leave some of it. But that's gonna hold pretty strong, and snelling a hook is something that I believe every angler should know, and that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for making it all the way to the end, those of you who are watching this. I hope that it's been helpful to you. If you haven't already, please push that like and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet. Like I said, we're gonna be putting one of these out every month. And if you know someone who likes to fish on the beach, then you can share this out with them. And if you're looking to learn more about fishing on the beach, check us out at fishing-girl.com and consider signing up for a charter. But thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Tight lines and God bless.